to another video about the A303. This time we're looking at boundaries, ditches, dikes, you name it, all at the beginning of the eastern end of the A303. If you take a peek at any detailed OS map, you'll notice that there's ditches and dikes scattered all over the place. As you travel down the A303, there are some particularly interesting ones, as we'll see in later episodes. Today, however, we're looking at two examples on the eastern edge of the A303. That's here. And this one. A relatively recent excavation conducted by Cotswold Archaeology just beyond the copse in the distance there for a new housing development, established that this ditch running from here, 500 metres around the curve to the south, was actually a linear boundary dating from the late Bronze Age. So, this Devil's Ditch did indeed turn out to be a linear boundary, the scale of which would indicate it was built by a large number of a local community. The boundary would act as more than just its namesake. It would often act as a symbol with religious association. It would define and order territorial holdings of those that constructed it. In fact, that particular boundary still acts as a district boundary today. It separates Basingstoke and Dean and Andover. What, if any, has this ditch here, the Andyke, near Bransbury, got to do with the ditch up there? The Devil's Ditch, near Smannell. When we started researching the Andyke on the interweb, we found a lot of detail about it being yet another late Bronze Age boundary. This didn't seem right. There's no others in close proximity. And more importantly, it's massive. It's more akin to a hill fort. In fact, it's 530 metres long. It's got a 14 metre ditch with a three metre bank this side and a two metre bank that side of the ditch. It's also got a break in the middle. What's more interesting, which I will attempt to show you with an extremely poorly constructed graphic, is that it appears to be on a peninsula. To the west, you've got the river test and to the south, you've got the River Diva, both with associated valleys. So could it be they were actually looking at a fairly substantial defensive earthwork? That would certainly account for the break, which is apparently halfway up the Andyke itself. We must be at least 200 meters up in that direction now, so we're hoping we're gonna stumble across it fairly soon. But we think we're over halfway up and we still have yet to find the break point in the middle, but we're confident we're gonna find it because it is documented. So, if you can imagine where we are now, to the south, that valley there is a River Diva. Right over that side, about 200 metres, is a River Test, which went north to south. What we're looking at right now is the slope upwards, so we're at the lower edge here of the peninsula that we discussed. So, all along this part here is the dike, or the Andyke. Um, which would indeed suggest it is protecting the lower end of this peninsula, right up onto the hill. So, this is the halfway point or supposedly the halfway point, because this is the clear break in the Andyke. We've just walked up that side. Um, we think it's also our journey's end, because the pathway um, is right there, to go further north towards the A303, which you can probably hear. Anyway, um, we assume that 
websites such as Historic England are correct and this was actually a break and has been a break since its construction rather than just perhaps a farmer infilling to get from field to field. Um, so we should go with Historic England and say this is definitely a break which would indeed indicate that this is a defensive earthwork. So currently the lack of understanding <clears throat> about this monument or this earthwork means that it doesn't have a full verification. However, sites like Historic England have suggested that it is an Iron Age hill fort. That being the case, it does give rise to the notion that both the Test and the Diva were much more prominent waterways than they are today. A hill fort in this location could only really give rise to protection from the south. Anybody travelling up the, wa the waterway will be faced with this 530 metre earthwork. So, in conclusion, it's unlikely that there is a link between the two ditches that we've looked at today. However, they both have very interesting histories which is well worth sharing. Thank you.